okay. Um, paper wise, you can use paper out of your copy machine, your printer. You can use um, a notebook of maybe you have like a journal that has uh, graphs or plain paper or lined paper. We can work with any of that. Um, I prefer plain myself for things like this. Um, you might have um, no quotes in mind, so we can use my joy quote. But I would love for us to just artistically fill this page. And I'm going to actually combine several of these, if I may. You guys do what you want. I'm going to do what we all want, I think. Uh, I'm, that's what I'm planning by getting this together. So here's my, my personal plan. I am going to go with this water. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to talk to you and then I'm going to have to go to screen so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go with watercolor paper and I'm actually going to cut it to a four by four square. And you might be asking yourself, why are you cutting it to a four by four square? Well, I found these really neat frames. And it's not that I think that, you know, it has to be perfectly done in order to be framed. But these are what I like to give for little, what I call JB gifts. Are you guys familiar with JB gifts? Raise your hand. Anybody know what a JB gift is? Mm -hmm. Yay, I'm gonna teach you. Just because, <laughs> just because. Sometimes I'll have these in my purse and someone's not looking like they're having a good day. And these are kind of generic, male, female, doesn't matter. Or all the others. <laughs> um, but even one day when I was at the bank, the, the young lady that usually helps me and knows my name and is very sweet, she was quieter than usual. And so as I was leaving, I just took it out of my purse, put it on her little counter there at the teller area. And she said, Lorraine, you left this. I said, oh no, that's for you because I want to brighten your day. And she just like, what? And it wasn't anything special. I mean, but it was fun for me to make. I get to enjoy the process. She gets to enjoy the surprise and away we go. So I'm cutting four before just because those four before frames are so cool. All right, once I get that cut, um, I am going to do part of what I call the color block process. So I'm going to take my watercolor paint. You can also just use um, watercolor pencils. And then I've got water and brush and all that in here. And I'm going to just put down some color randomly, okay? Once I get that color on there, it's just gonna take a couple minutes to dry. It's very quick to dry. Then I'm gonna start my quote and I'm gonna go ahead and use my joy quote. Let me find my joy quote. Well, it's on the bottom, of course. <laughs> Here we go. So I am going to use joy is a net of love by which you can catch souls. Okay, so I'm gonna share screen because I think we now have a plan. So here's a paper that's a wee bit too big because I would like to do this. The frames, they also make five by five, but eh, they cost more. And the joy break today, it's so fun to have Carol in the house <laughs> to do this together. So I don't know if you already have paper, if you're just using a journal, if you're cutting it to size, but whatever you want to work on, and sincerely, uh, it could be just printer paper. Now, is that paper size okay, or do you want to trim? It looks like it's four by four. I believe it is. Yeah. Okay, good. I just did that one bigger on purpose to show them. It's fun to have somebody in the house. I'm serious. Okay, so now here's my piece of paper. First thing, I know I'm going to do color blocks, and I personally am going to use green and pink, a very bright green and hopefully a bright pink. I've got two sets of watercolor paints here. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to pencil in my quotation. You can use any quote, let me fold this paper down. Yeah. You can use any quote you like, but if you do like a joy quote, I think this one is lovely. And I have a whole book of joy quotes if you want me to read you something else. You can go into your phone, your iPad, whatever you have handy there, folks, and find a quotation that you like, or just like Carol did wisdom, please feel free to just take a word, whether it's joy. Oh, if it was joy, okay, so let's say you did joy, then you could dangle off of it with some of the, let me go, here there. 
with some of, oh, I'm down here now, <laughs> with some of the dangles. That'd be fun for joy. And look, if you did J-O-Y in block letters, I may have to do more than one thing. If you did J-O-Y in these blocks, then the dangles could come off of them. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing two things and alternating. That way you can do what you want, but maybe I can influence and help. And please chat or ask a question. Just there's a small group, speak out and we will um, do our best to respond. So I'm going to get my little handy dandy cup ready. I got to get some water in it. And Carol, if you want to use watercolor, you're welcome to, we can share this water. Well, I was kind of thinking of just doing some drawing. Okay. And then using some markers later. Excellent. If you couldn't hear, Carol is going to be doing the drawing part now and maybe markers later. And for these dangles, the very fine tip markers are really lovely because the, usually the tips on the dangles are pretty small. I really like, I don't know if you've seen these, these are big intensity stick markers. Ugh. They are so lovely thin. And when you're filling in these tiny objects, I just like how they work. In fact, sometimes I use them instead of, of watercolor. And if you want to use them, we'll put them right here. All right, thank you. So I'm gonna get my background ready. If your background is solid, white, black, plain, et cetera, just leave it. But I'm going to get my brush. I'm going now to get the blotches that I want. And I don't know if you guys have done this. I'm going to just put down some water. Kind of, of course, that's not gonna show up, but trust me, these are, just squiggles of wetness. <laughs> and I am just going to randomly, I'm gonna keep them from touching in a couple places. Then I'm going to get my colors ready. And I am going to use this pink. Here, let me move it so I'm not putting my hand right in front of me. I put that there, that there, and that there. That's better. So I'm going to get a lot of water to make this where it's going to drip and, and use this to just, oh, there's a pretty one. I like it. There's another one. And if you've never done it before, it is so fun to get salt, just table salt. And, uh, Put it on this and it will really help dispense in, in, in unique ways. I'm gonna go down here. That's a little intense. Let's get some water. All right. I don't like that last one much. So we're gonna just do the old absorb trick. <laughs> and that gives me a cute little block I like. Okay, now I said pink and green. So I'm gonna get this bright green. And at the end, uh, hoping that you do get to finish at least one thing today, um, let's make sure, and you guys help me remember, that uh, we hold these up to the screen and Mel can get a screenshot of our fun cards. Oops, that one's too thick, completely. Completely too thick. But that's okay. I think I'll kind of take that one like this. Now, if they're colors you like to blend together, oh, I do like doing this to the green. See, it's an experiment. Come on. You can need a little bit more water down here, like a smiley face almost. I'm gonna pick one color. Mm, I think I'm going to pick purple. You might be using anything for your background. If you're going choosing, there we go. Oh, and sometimes when people put a lot of water on and do this to get certain uh, abstract, they will use a straw and blow on it, but I'm just going to let it drip off the page if it will be so kind. Well, it's interesting how the tension changes. And I and so then I like to turn it. Which way do I like my card? Ooh, if I put this down here, it's almost as if my green is like a plant. Now this got a little bit muddied. I'm gonna just kind of change that. 
on purpose. That's one thing with art, people. You get to decide. So I'm going to clean that up. So a little nice darkness. Get a little more water. Make it drip. There we go. I like that better. Ryan, is there any difference between types of watercolors that you use? Yeah, let me tell you, with watercolors, there's the basics, which what you might call child or student grade. Um, they do those long. Yeah, long like the praying. Long, yeah, there's, yeah. And, well, and even Crayola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might spend $1.99 or you might spend uh, $1,000 on paints, let me tell you. These two that I have, uh, this small set right here is um, a bright color. I like the bright colors. I just like the bright colors. And so this particular, and these are all travel sets. So these are called tropicals. But you can see the reason that we do the color swatches is because these don't really necessarily look like that. You know, it has to give yourself a little help there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then these are koi. Um, those were maybe 20 bucks, 25. These I think were 35, 40. You know, you use a coupon. Don't ever pay full price. Wait, wait until you can use a coupon. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Now, sometimes people will use a heat gun. You can use the blow dryer. That would probably blow it around a wee bit. <laughs> but while that's drying, I'm gonna get my pencil and start sketching my joy quote. And I'll just kind of start here. What happened to my pencil? There it is. <clears throat> now, this particular lettering is called ribbon. You may or may not want the ribbon part, but um, I'm going, and I may end up just doing a uh, nice big joy with the dangles, I think, on top of the color. Met those aren't even color blocks. Those are color blotches, right? I like them. So there's my joy, or my J for joy. And then it looks like if I very simply come in like this and overlap, and then come in like this and overlap, this is going to go behind and come up and of course, I'm going to do this neater as I get to my finished product. But when I'm sketching the shape and size, it's not a problem. And that's the most wonderful thing about pencil. It's original. And so I'm going to bring this one down. But ribbon lettering has to be one of my favorites for just short words. Um, I, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it when I have like a whole phrase, but Bring this one down. I kind of, I want it to be sort of like in my J here, but not exactly. So if I bring this in here, take it there. This one went this way, but you know, nothing says it couldn't go up. It can. So I kind of like that basic shape. It's, it's going to fit my four by four. I'm going to do it near the top, probably a wee bit smaller so that then I can do some dangles. And dangles are sincerely just lines. Now, if you want to be very per perfect, you know, more straight, you're welcome, of course, to use a ruler. And I will, ooh, you know what? What if, oh, let me get a scratch piece. <laughs> getting excited now. Ah, who knows? What okay. if we did this? Okay, so what if we did our J? I'm just gonna kind of get it started, you'll see. And then we had our Y. Okay. What if here with where must be here? What if we had all of these? Let me see, this might be about the center. Yeah. What if instead of dropping the tangles, I brought them all? Let 
in radiant lines. And we take our joy all the way around, even though over here it's going to include the J and the Y. I think I might do that and fill my entire card. Let's see what that looks like. And again, you don't have to use a ruler. I'm just doing it for speed right here. So this would go there, there. So kind of thinking about this, this is the center of that O. Now I can make that bigger. That would work. And then you could just keep going out. different lengths. And if you wanted to, of course, we can come in here. Nothing says we can't use the entire thing. That might be an option. So dangles from the joy, a circular dangle. Wouldn't be quite a dangle. What would we call a circular one? That could work with one word, or we could do the entire quote. Joy is a net of love by which you can catch souls. And any of your own handwriting, and it's fun, you might notice that in the A, joy is a net. So in a, I made it kind of look like a net inside the A. And love, I've just colored around it, put a little heart on the, at the end of the E. I just kind of did capital letters, small letters, Here's the fun thing too about capital letters and small letters. Let's just be random. So let's go, um, oh, let's see. I'm gonna use this, 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 this. So I've just written a code. So it's going to say like, if I was doing the word which, capital, small, capital, capital, small. Ah, oh, it's interesting. So, so you can just randomly put out your letters for capitals or small letters. You can use an L for lowercase. Uh, and then when you're writing, oh, and it's so funny because on this one, I actually did do caps and littles, but I ended up with a small, a lowercase H and a capital H. So, um, and then if I may, let me show you this. Because one of the things I really enjoyed doing that I learned from Lindsay Ostrom is the concept of um, messy lines. And then another thing that I really like from Joanne Sharp is very similar. I'm gonna show you Joanne's because I have her book right here. And then it's really easy for me to show you um, something from Lindsay as well. And these are just inspiration for me. Oh, look at these radiating lines. And I don't know if you ever go to YouTube or Pinterest, uh, there's so much that you can see that will inspire you and see these blocks right here. Those aren't necessarily color blocks as I was thinking of them, but you could do mindful slow drawing or zentangle sketches in there. But this is one of the things I love um, that Joanne Sharp does. So we might put the word joy in the center with or without the dangles. And then she draws this border so I could put joy, and then from here, I could put the quotation around the square. And the little heart right there would be appropriate for joy. So lots of decisions, but um, I've, about, I've about decided what I'm going to do. I hope you've decided you can do exactly what I do, similar to what I do, or completely your own thing. So let me get my paper. It's not quite dry, so I'm going to make it go dry without making it have a noisy machine <laughs> like a hair dryer. There we go. And I like that effect. Oh, and if you didn't know it, your paper towels have a variety of textures. And so this is pretty much a standard paper towel, but uh, on watercolor paper, and especially with paper towel, you're gonna get a, a double texture, the texture from the water paper and the texture from the paper towel. So this one's ready, but I'm still undecided. I think now that I like it this way. Okay. And you will notice, of course, the water made the paper warp just a smidge. It's okay. 
that's another thing I would say is you put it under books when it's dry so that it flattens really nicely and it'll fit in your frame very nicely. So I am going to put my joy in the middle. And again, if I want to use a ruler to kind of get the center, fine. I'm just going to eyeball it. But I'm going to start with my O so that I sort of get that centered. And I'm going to move up. No. Right about here. So there's the start of the O, coming up to the Y. And I'm going to go with a, I'm going to keep this height here similar instead of having a, all of the J being above it. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see, I can actually go a little further down. So if I do that, the O is a little, that's okay. And then I'm going to come here with my Y. Okay, so that should work. Now I am going to go ahead and do this like ribbon line. Oh, no, I know what I'm going to do. Almost like a Zentangle. I'm going to pretend like I've got dots in each corner because then tangle starts with a dot in each corner if you're doing a traditional square. And then once I get those on, I'm going to go ahead and you can erase everything you don't need, right? I'm gonna hand that out of your way. Next, I'm gonna come right about here because I want it to be that thick. And I'm gonna go like this, this, this. Then I'm going to go like this and keep it as one. Then I'm going to overlap again. And then I'm going to keep this as one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just use black on the two that I know I'm gonna stick with. And I'm going to use a 10. These micron pens, you guys may have any brand, but what's nice about these is they are uh, waterproof, but don't, that doesn't mean you should touch them immediately. For example, if I put a mark and rub it immediately, do you see how it's smudged? But if I put a mark and leave it alone, it will not smudge, it will be waterproof. And so I could even do this and then paint over it if I so chose. But on um, these ones, I kept the same. I'm going to essentially make those. Well, first, let me trace that line. And I'm not checkerboarding because I'm not having multiples, but I'm going to um, just make those black and white. And this is a very thick pen because I know for our purposes today, it will uh, allow me to color faster. Not that it matters. So I'm going to have black and white borders on each side. Carol, have you made a decision on how, what you're doing? Yes, I have. And what are you doing? Well, I have a phrase, joyful, joyful, we adore you. Yes. And so I've, I've kind of done the lettering with those. And I've done something different than I've ever done before. I put, I have joyful, joyful, and I put my dangles behind and so they come back out again. Let me show them, may I? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. So you can see her pencil underneath and then she came back with, with black and she has started her dangles right here. And even going behind. I'm getting some trees and kind of holiday themed things over on the side, and then I'll start to cut it. Now, when I go to do my joy neatly, um, I will show you one of the, it's not really a trick, but one of the things that helps me the most when I'm not feeling terribly neat, but I want my products to look neat if at all possible. 
So I'm just drawing my line. You could, of course, be using a paintbrush or other markers, colored markers. Carol, that song is the first song I learned to play on the piano. Ooh. Yep. Any piano players out there? I decided my left side, which is my bradykinesia side, needs to have some exercise. So I bought a baritone ukulele and I'm learning to play it very slowly, but I'm learning. Art is much easier for me than the ukulele. <laughs> I have an eraser nearby. I have an eraser nearby. We'll come over. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're doing one word or chat. And raise your hand if you're doing a quote like Carol. Okay. And you might be doing something else. You might be observing. Now we're probably going to have time for two joy breaks today, which is very exciting. Actually, it's 1.37 my time, so I'm going to get my joy break out. And uh, oh, if you, this is your first time, we have a joy break jar at the beginning of the year. I just type up a variety of little things that could be anywhere from 30 seconds to three minutes or even five. And it's something that... Um, Brings me joy, number one, for the surprise of what am I drawing out of my jar, uh, but also to then recycle and, and if I want to and if I like it, because I give my permission to have my joy any way I want. Oh, here we go. Two wonder filled minutes. I have my watch here, not that we have to be perfectly timed. All right, if you're doing a joy break with me, it says sit comfortably, relax. Try to bring your shoulders down, relaxed, and back without being, feeling stiff. You know, just kind of, as I was uh, working with students in physical education, it would be ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips over heels. So that, like, of course, we're seated, but get the idea. Flat feet, no cross legs. And we're just going to sit comfortably a few more seconds. And slow your breathing. So as you inhale, count silently, how many counts do you get? When you exhale, exhale one longer. Breathing is marvelous. We like breathing. Then it says for the next 20 seconds to look around or to look straight ahead, whichever you wanna do and Pay attention to what you're seeing. And I'm looking at a window, so I'm going to look out my window uh, instead of at the shelf or the desk. And then it says, what are you hearing? What are you smelling? If you can still smell, I can't smell. So I'm going to be paying attention to what I see, what I hear for 20 seconds. Kind of like a commercial break, right? Then it says, now for 20 seconds, reflect on four things that you're seeing, three things that you're hearing, and if you can smell, one or two things that you smell. I can imagine smelling what I'm seeing, but I don't smell it. So 20 seconds of reflecting, pausing, thinking. So whatever you're seeing, I hope is bringing you joy. Out my window, there is an incredibly huge red oak tree. It's still green. We're in Texas, and so it's not gone to any kind of autumn color yet. And sometimes we don't have much autumn color. But I want to just enjoy the moment, not worrying about what's coming or when it's leafless, right? So 
beautiful, beautiful leaves. And it's windy because the leaves are moving. And the movement makes me think of dance. I know if any of you watch Amy Says Dance, today was her farewell day. Carol was participating in that earlier. Um, for movement, maybe you're a walker. And so when you're out walking, if the wind is uh, pleasant, that's one thing. When it's blowing like <laughs> crazy, that's not as much fun. But it does give you greater intensity for your workout. So my mind wanders while I'm thinking about what I'm seeing. Uh, and I can't really hear because my window's closed, but I can imagine the rustling of the leaves and I can imagine sitting in my backyard and looking and seeing and, and uh, really appreciating this tree. And I think the key word there is appreciating and the key word for me is always joy. Um, it brings me joy to see that pretty tree, especially because since the tree grew, I can't see the house next door. <laughs> I love the people next door. But, um, but sometimes we see, but we don't, or, you know, we hear, but we're not listening. That's an easier phrase to use is the hearing versus the listening. Or maybe I, maybe people will say, you know, you're, you're blind, you see it, but you're blind. You're not really seeing it, but we'll have another joy break before we go. I think uh, you get the idea on where I'm going with this. I'm going to do different things in these, and I might get to one of those for you, but I want to get my joy on here. Oh, this way. Hello. There we go. Now I'm going to double check in my pencil. Oh, and by the way, I think you guys know that the white erasers are really lovely for not leaving marks on your uh, work. And so these um, Pentel pencils, mechanical pencils, they actually feature the white. It's a good white eraser. Can you tell I've been abusing myself lately? <laughs> Look at these poor nails. This was the, um, I think I told you, this was the pickup truck tailgate we had gotten. So I'm going to erase this a little because I want to make sure I get the exact size I want now that I've got my lines up. It doesn't have to be fully erased. But I'm going to use these lines. Can you see this uh, has a square? I don't know what you're using for your base or if you have a base but I like to have a base so I'm going to draw just some dashed lines to help me see where I want my joy okay that's good and again I'm still going to go ahead and put my uh, O and what I'm going to consider to be the middle oh here let's see four by four look at that that's close enough <laughs> so I think my O is pretty okay but I've got to move it up so move it up here do my outer shape first. And then for this type of a letter, it's kind of focal. Like if I'm going to come here to the point, then I'm going to go down, make it thin. So see, it's thick here, then thin. So that means that I'm going to want it to be thin to thick here. So you can see how this shape, if you imagine that's kind of like, you guys have pecan trees? Almost like a pecan to me, oval, ellipse, football. What are you going to call it? I'm going to bring this line here. I'm going to bring this line here. And we're going to go out thinner to the Y. Okay. Get my Y done right over here. Make it just a little bit stockier and then a little bit thinner. And I'm going to keep, I think, about that same shape there to there. Bring this here. Bring this here. Made it a little stubbier than the first one. And I'm just going to go out to a point here. I'm not going to worry about that one in the ribbon that I had in my other example. So there's my J, my Y, I mean, my O and my Y. Now I do like, oh, look at it. It's right there at that dot. How perfect. I do like having my J just a smidge bigger. Not too much. Make it a little squattier. I'm going to bring it here and let that be. Oh, that's fun. So now I'm going to get my micron in a thinner pen. I need the micron to be in. This is you in here. And I'm going to, here, I'm just going to go here. I don't know about your experience, but my experience with these fine liners is that, you know, you use them up at different rates. So I always keep this one case 
where these are my newest of each size. And so I'm gonna to go to the smallest that I have, which is a 0 0.005. And I'm going to come in now and I'm going to go like this. It's pretty thin, but we're gonna thicken it up later. And I'm gonna go like this. And I teardrop it. I'm just going to take it, not connect it to my, oh, I like my separate O. So there's my first part of my O, my second part of my O. This is going to come over. I am going to connect it to my Y. So I'm going to I'm gonna get this lip here. I'm going to get this lip here. Bring that down. Bring that down. Okay. Now, so that's very thin. May I borrow that eraser? Yeah. Oh, got it. Oh, and by the way, when you get marks on your eraser, I just erase it on my desk then. You can see it's shaking. <laughs> And it gets the marks off. Then you just have to kind of clean your desk later. So now I'm going to very gently come in. I'm going to get rid of the pencil marks. Don't want the competition between the pencil marks and my lines. And I'm going to then show you how both um, Joanne Sharp and Lindsay Ostrom do some of their lettering in a in kind of a fun freehand way. Okay, there we go. Wipe that better. So what you'll notice is my J is like my biggest letter. O is right there. I did Y a little smaller on purpose because I just I wanted to kind of fill this space, but I did a nice big thing there and I could do something here or here. I'll show you. But now I'm gonna get the rest of my quote and I'm gonna use my pencil again. And I'm gonna draw a line, oh like that. Then I'm going to draw a line like that. And then I'm going to come like this. And I'm going to go like that. And then I'm going to go like that. So I, I filled my space with lines. Now, the rest of the quote, I'm just going to like pencil without really penciling. I'm, I'm just going to look. So if I put joy is a net then it'd be of love i and w h i c h u c a n can catch oh and then souls would be down here centered oh that's fun okay i think that's what i'm gonna do i do need space perhaps for mother Teresa's name we'll have to think about that we'll, we'll get her in there let me see so here we go. I'm gonna put my is, and I'm gonna do it um, with a circle and with just a nice straight I. And my S, I'm gonna leave, I think, kind of skinny singular with a little lip here, a little lip here. Okay. And then my, I like my A with the, the net look, but I'm gonna make it be a little bit bigger than my line allows. So there's my A, love is A. And I think for net, let me think net. I think I'm gonna block print it. And maybe, I'll have, oh, I know. The top of the NET can be like the top of like a tennis net. Maybe, we'll see. Okay, love is a net. I'm going to go down here for by. I think I'm going to curse at that. By. And then, uh, oh, I know what. I'm going to go ahead and go with my cap and lowercase. So I'm going to go lowercase, cap, cap, lowercase, lowercase. Okay, so la joy is in it by which. Ooh, let's do block U Y O U 
knows it by which you and it's kind of small um i know what let's do skinny cats um, and then i'm gonna do really thick lowercase c-a-t-c always annoying when i misspell something and i'm writing but thank heavens for pencils okay so joy is a net by which you can catch souls i'm gonna do all cursive on souls oh you i keep it like that and then I have room for Mother Teresa right here. And she does not have an H, if I understand correctly. So it's T-E-R-E-S-A. And what's nice is I don't have to worry if that's neat, messy, or what have you, because I'm going to fix it now if I feel like I need a fixing uh, with my marker. So first, I'm going to thicken my joy. And I'm going to decide. My gosh, my time is escaping and I wanted to do two joy breaks. One joy break that I had the other day was to send a uh, text or email to someone I haven't communicated with lately. And what was fun is they wrote back. <laughs> I'm just kind of striping my joy. Usually when you start writing, moving the pen, you get an idea. And so just stick with it. Okay. Well, I'm going to put a little whimsical heart right there. <laughs> okay. So you get the idea with how I'm going to do my joy. So now let's move on. So the question might be, can I really read um, these letters very well with those color blocks below them? You know, this is an experiment, might not be my favorite. I have to see what happens when I finish it. But I'm going back to a fat pen. This time I have eight, because I want these to be kind of thick block letters. Okay. And I'm gonna change that A. I'm gonna go to, And then I'm going to switch my net to be thicker since these color watercolor letters are a little, or the watercolor blotches are a little bit big. Okay. And I am going to put circles. You know, I was thinking of tennis. You can do tennis balls. Not really. And I'll probably come back with color in between. Then I'm going to square these like the edges. That might be hard to read until I get it blocked. Let me take that one out. There we go. And I will use a thinner pen to stripe this. I like that one plain. Let's put this one this way. Okay. But I want them to stand out a little bit more. We are about running out of time, not, not completely yet, but I just want to show you something so you know. Once that has dried a little bit, so I'm going to come over here to the left where I started. Again, going back to these lovely white erasers, they're just a rubber, uh, plastic, a polymer, whatever. So they leave no residual. And I just gently go around and you can see the lines are gone, the pencil marking is gone. Uh, it just cleans it up so nicely. I like it. And if I had wanted to remember, I could do joy bigger and put is a net by which, yeah, all around it, that's fun. 
I am going to try my another big letter for us before we move on. So I'm going to come back to my O. I'm going to pull around a little thicker. I did pencil and then I did the 005 just so I could see it better. Once you've got the 005, there's not a lot of room for change, but there's some room because this is so much thicker. So now on this one, I think that I'm going to take my 01 and I am going to go ahead and I'm going to come right in here. And I'm going to just put lines up there. Okay. Then here, I'm going to go like this, just randomly. Okay. Then right here, I'm going to do just a small, just five. I like to do things in odds. And then I'm just going to, I think, leave that for a moment and see what I want to do. But I like the bottom of the, oh, that, I like that. So let me get my pen, just where I can show you what this is going to look like. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to look at the watch. Oh, yeah, we have a few more minutes. You know, and going back to that original concept of doing accordion books, um, it is so fun for me to have them actually become super, like uh, special sayings or, or letters to folks. And uh, I'm gonna go with my 03. And on this one, I am going to go this way, just to give it a little personality. And on this one, I am going to go like this three times, this three times, this, three times, this one three times. Yep, I might put a dot, I might put a triangle, I like the dots. And then in this one, I am going to, hmm, what do I do in this one? Let's go with, ooh, color cues, color cues. It's a small book, but down here, I could do curly cues in this big one too. So just to kind of have light border, dark border, light border, dark border, a little bit of color, not necessarily a color block. When I finish this, you know, in solid black, like I can show you guys next month and if you'll show us yours next month. Thank you so much, Lorraine. It was wonderful. Thanks everybody for showing up and sharing your work and uh, we will see you in a month's time. Mm -hmm.